So I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, I'll be speaking about vector bundles in algebraic geometry and in particular about a particular class of vector bundles, which is of interest in the, uh, which is of interest to people working in the vector bundle theory. Let me uh, begin by posing the following question. Let F in uh, Can you speak a bit, a bit louder? Yeah. Sure. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Okay. Let, uh, so I'll begin by posing the following question. Let F in C, X0, X1 up to Xn be a smooth and homogeneous polynomial. Then can F be written as a determinant of a matrix of linear forms? So we are starting with a polynomial in n plus one variables, which is homogeneous. We are asking whether we can find a matrix whose entries are uh, linear homogeneous polynomials, such that the determinant of matrix is F. Now, this is a classical question, which has been considered uh, since 1800s. And um, so uh, let's just look at an example. Let's look at this polynomial x squared plus y squared plus x squared plus w squared. That's the determinant of um, this matrix of linear forms. Uh, so this uh, question can be rephrased in algebraic geometric terms as follows. So uh, f is a polynomial in n plus one variables. So f defines a hypersurface in the projective n space as follows. Um, so let us look at this z of f. This is the zero, zero locus of f. This is the set of all points p in the projective space such that f vanishes at p, f of p is zero. So this is a hypersurface in pn. So we are cutting down by one equation. So we get a co-dimension one uh, variety in pn. And um, so notice that I had mentioned that the polynomial is smooth. So what does it mean? It means that the hypersurface has to be smooth. And wh uh, what does that mean? That means the pol uh, so the polynomial f is smooth at a point p in z of f. If there is some variable xi such that the first partial with respect to xi does not vanish at p. So this is the usual definition of smoothness in manifold theory. So the question now becomes, is any smooth hypersurface a determinantal hypersurface? Here, um, by determinantal hypersurface, I mean a determinant of a matrix of linear forms. So as you may have guessed, the answer to this question is through vector bundle techniques. I'll come to this question, uh, the, answer, uh, the answer to this question in, in a little bit. Now. Um, I'll just talk about some generalities on vector bundles. So uh, this may be familiar to most of you, but I'll just, um, for the sake of completeness, I'll just run through it. Uh, what is a vector bundle? Uh, a rank R vector bundle V on a topological space X. Roughly it assigns an R dimensional vector space VX at each point X and X. So over a point of the or over each point of the topological space, we fix a vector space. And uh, these vector spaces, this fibered space, they, the fibers Vx vary continuously. So we are able to glue together, fib uh, together the fibers to get a nice space, which is called the total space of V, which itself becomes a topological space. There's a natural projection map from V to X, which becomes continuous. And um, this definition can be extended to other categories as well. For instance, the category of differentiable manifolds, complex manifolds, schemes, et cetera. And some uh, simple examples of vector bundles are uh, as follows. So if over each point of the topological space, we fix the same vector space. So let's start with a fixed vector space, vector space V, and then uh, put the same vector space over each point of X, what we get is the trivial vector bundle. Now, uh, if X is a smooth manifold, over each point X of the manifold, let's attach the tangent space to the manifold at that point. Now these tangent spaces glue together very nicely to give a vector bundle called the tangent bundle. Now, uh, uh, so the ve vector bundles came into picture in uh, differential geometry. This was around uh, this was around the 1930s. This was the time of Carta. Now uh, they uh, they were they became uh, used in algebraic geometry after 1945. This was around the time when Leray introduced sheaves and spectral sequences. So when uh, when sheaves were introduced, it was noticed that sheaves are the right uh, objects to encode uh, information and to get the right abstraction in algebraic geometry, and um, Around the same time, uh, the mathematician geometer Weil observed that a divisor B on a complex projective variety is naturally attached to a line bundle OD. So let me say a few, a uh, couple of uh, words on this. So if we have, uh, suppose we have a compact complex manifold, a divisor D is nothing but an N minus uh, co-dimension one subvariety, uh, submanifold. So if you have a co-dimension one submanifold, then we can naturally associate a line bundle to it. So if the co-dimension one submanifold is denoted by D, the line bundle is denoted by OD. Similarly, if you have a line bundle on a manifold, compact complex manifold, which is which has enough global section, then each global section will, uh, the zero, the vanishing of each global section defines a sub-manifold and co-dimension one sub-manifold. 
So this uh, correspondence was observed by Weil. So uh, around this time, people noticed that vector bundles were not just formal tools, but they encode a lot of geometric information as well. So it was also observed that if X is a smooth projective variety, there's a, there's a correspondence between isomorphism classes of rank R vector bundles and isomorphism classes of rank R locally free sheets. So the dictionary between algebra and geometry became easier to use. And um, uh, people became interested in studying vector bundles, not just as tools, but as geometric objects themselves. So uh, one particular question um, in the theory of vector bundles, uh, which was of interest, which has been of interest since then, is uh, the structure of vector bundles. Whether uh, given a vector bundle, does it split into a direct sum of vector bundles of smaller rank? So the first uh, result in this direction was by Grothendi. He uh, proved that every vector bundle on P1 is a direct sum of line bundles. Now uh, P1 is in some sense the simplest variety. It's just a line. And we know all the line bundles on P1. So on any projective space, in fact, the line bundles on projective space is parameterized by the by Z, the group of integers. So for every integer, uh, we have associated to every integer M, we have a, a line bundle OM. And Grothendieck proved that uh, any vector bundle on P1 is a direct sum of such line bundles. Now, uh, it, was, it was immediately clear also, uh, it was immediately proved that over, even over P2, there are vector bundles which are indecomposable which cannot be written as a direct sum of line bundles. So um, it's not true that every vector bundle can be written as a direct sum of line bundles. So the question became, what condition should we impose on vector bundles on projective spaces so that they split as a direct sum of line bundles? So before going to that, uh, just a fun aside, this was Hartshorn's conjecture. This was in, uh, he posed this question in around um, 1979. He uh, said every rank two vector bundle on PN when N is greater than or equal to seven is a direct sum of line bundles. Uh, so that it's still open. Uh, so, um, so this is not just a formal vector bundle question. It also carries geometric content. Uh, the, the geometric interpretation of this question is actually that any co-dimension two subvariety of PN when N is greater than or equal to seven is actually a complete intersection variety. And what do we mean by complete intersection variety? It is defined precisely by the vanishing of two polynomials. If it's co-dimension two, then we are cutting down by uh, when we intersect two hypersurfaces, then we will precisely get any co-dimension to uh, uh, sub-variety. This is not always true, but uh, if Hartshorn's conjecture is true, then it's true for uh, Pn when n is greater than or equal to seven. Now, coming back to the uh, question that I asked earlier, when does a vector bundle on the projective space uh, split as a direct sum of line, bundle, line bundles? Uh, so this was proved by Horrocks. Uh, he proved that a vector bundle E on Pn splits as a direct sum of line bundles precisely when the following condition holds. So we have this following condition about vanishing of certain cohomology groups of this vector bundle. So HI of E of K is zero, where I ranges from one to N minus one and all K in Z, uh, all K. So uh, here we want all the cohomology groups to vanish. Uh, the cohomologies, uh, we, we don't have the zeroth cohomology and the top cohomology, except that all the cohomology should vanish for all twists of E. So uh, he observed that this condition ensures that the vector bundle, this is actually a necessary and sufficient condition for a vector bundle or on projective play, space to split into a direct sum of line bundles. This was actually a seminal result in the sense that mathematicians observed that this condition, it can be, we could just look at this condition in isolation for other projective varieties as well. Over projective space, these, uh, these vector bundles are clearly special. So uh, people, uh, the uh, mathematicians suspected that they will, um, they will also, uh, the over other varieties also, they will be special. And it indeed turned to be true. And such vector bundles are called the uh, arithmetically cohen macaulay bundles. So, or ACM bundles. What are ACM bundles? A vector bundle E on a smooth polarized projective variety X, OX of one is called an ACM bundle if the exact same condition holds. So just a word about what polarization is. A smooth projective variety X along with the polarization is nothing but X which is embedded in the projective, with a fixed embedding inside the projective space. The embedding gets, gives us a line bundle OX of one, which will help us twist. So vector bundles which satisfy the same cohomological conditions are called ACM bundles. Now the question uh, which is interesting about ACM bundles is, um, see, uh, note that over projective space, ACM bundles, any ACM, uh, higher rank ACM bundle splits as a direct sum of line bundles. So the only ACM bundle over a projective space, which is indecomposable is the line bundle. 
so now if you uh, if uh, we study a projective space and is if we study the category or family of acm bundles over it if if it is simple if it has finitely many acm bundles then it is closer to the projective space if it has a large family of acm bundles indecomposable acm bundles then it's farther away from being a projective space so it measures the complexity of the variety in some sense but i'll not be speaking about the acm bundles uh, i'm interested in a subclass of acm bundles called ulrich bundles among acm bundles ulrich bundles are those which have the largest permitted number of global sections so notice that this acm bundles this homological conditions on acm bundles they will um, impose some restriction on the number of global sections so if they have the largest number of global sections such bundles are called ulrich bundles there there are several other equivalent characterizations of ulrich bundles each of which is very uh, give a lot gives us a lot of intuition in different context but i'll not be defining ulrich bundles but i'll just um, give uh, illustrate why they are interesting so i'll go back to the question that uh, i start uh, i started with so uh, to recall f is a polynomial in n plus 1 variables which is homogeneous and smooth then it is it a determinant of a matrix of linear forms so in general the answer is no because determinantal hypersurfaces have singularities in codimension 3 so what does this mean if you take a polynomial which is a determinant then and you take the hypersurface defined by it then it always has singularities in codimension 3 so if this um, poly, uh, this hypersurface has dimension 3 and greater it always has singular points we are asking whether a smooth if a smooth hypersurface is the same as a singular hypersurface the answer is obviously no but now this is not satisfying so let's weaken the question a bit let's ask whether some power of f is uh, is the determinant now why is this a nice question because the points in uh, so f power r of p is zero if and only if f of p is zero because we are over a complex number so uh, the zero set of f power r and zero set of f have the same points so we are asking whether uh, a smooth hypersurface is set theoretically a determinantal hypersurface the following characterization was obtained in bowell in his paper in 2007 he said that he proved that um, let x inside pn be a smooth hypersurface of degree b defined by the equation f equal to 0 then the following two conditions are equivalent uh, f power r is determinant uh, is a, is the determinant of a matrix of linear forms and the second thing is tunda you have 3 minutes left okay thank you uh, the second condition is x carries an ulrich bundle of rank r so he noticed this uh, equivalent characterization uh, but however it was already proved by herzog ulrich and backlin in commutative algebra that any smooth hypersurface carries an ulrich bundle so uh, by using the equivalent characterization of bovil uh, we are able to say that any uh, if you start with any homogeneous polynomial uh, then some power of f is a determinant of matrix of linear forms so that uh, so this shows that um, uh, these ulrich bundles have nice geometric uh, uh, they have nice geometric um, uh, intuition behind them so the question of interest about ulrich bundles is uh, follows It was uh, first uh, posed by Ulrich and later by Eisenberg and Scheer. Uh, does every smooth projective variety carry an Ulrich bundle? So this is the question that I am actually have been working on for the past several years. Um, uh, so it 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 appears that it it's not possible to get a general answer to this question over all projective varieties. So it uh, people have been picking projective varieties and producing Ulrich bundles over them, and. Uh, so this was one of the recent uh, results that i obtained in collaboration with mohan kumar uh, from washington university and aj parmeshwaran if x is a double cover of the projective space smooth double cover of the projective space then x carries an ulrich bundle and if uh, if if it's a double cover of the projective plane then the ulrich bundle has rank 2 um uh, now uh, i'm actually working with pranav uh, in order to understand ulrich uh, bundles in the context of non commutative uh, geometry and um, uh derived categories uh yeah so that's actually about what i wanted to say thank you thank you punna for the nice talk uh we can have a couple of questions hello uh hi, hi. uh hi. so this statement that Uh, f to the power r is determinant m. Um, is it uh, how is it related to the question of whether uh, something is a complete intersection? Whether is there is there any relation at all? Or? Uh, 
that i don't i don't see a direct connection so uh, so um like um one one way i'm asking is that what do these um, the rows and the columns of these matrices represent let's say i find an m um what what do these rows and columns tell me about this hypersurface or uh, is there some statement uh, that one can make um uh, i haven't really thought about it um yeah maybe that's something to think about uh, i'm not really sure okay uh, uh, any, yeah so in this uh, hearts on conjecture that you mentioned uh, there was this n greater than or equal to 7 uh, right. so is it because for uh, smaller values of n uh, you uh, there, there's an extensive uh, uh, you know that it is not true or uh... yeah up to so the conjecture was actually n greater than or equal to five but for five and six people have produced uh, stable vector bundles of rank two so now it has been extended from seven onwards it's still open i see yeah, but there's no uh, particular uh, i no, mean it's, it's been hard, uh, right from p4 it has been quite hard to produce uh, construct uh, indecomposable vector bundles I see. So seven may also go up. Uh, yeah, yes. on. So then there's nothing hard and fast. Nothing special about uh, seven, yeah. I see. Okay. Let us thank. If there is no question, let us. Oh. Okay, sure, sure. Okay. Okay. If there is no question, uh, let us thank Purna again.